This is our introduction to approximations, decimal places, and significant figures on page 7 of our textbook. I think, generally speaking, rounding and rounding decimal places we're pretty good at uh, in terms of approximation. Uh, what do I mean by approximation? Why is rounding a value approximating? Or when would you ever want to round a value? When do you ever see rounded values? Sorry? Money. Perfect. Can you give me the scenario in which case the money would be rounded? Right. Uh, 50, five, uh, no. 57 cents. Perfect. If your total is 57 cents, you're not going to pay 57 cents in cash, of course. You're going to pay 60 cents, right? So rounding is very important and actually brings up a very good point. Anytime you see money, where we have rounding with money at all, it should always be to two decimal places. Because we can't have, for example, 0 0.007 of a cent. It should always be to two decimal places. So, round and we approximate. We're not giving the actual answer, we approximate. Which is why a lot of the time when you see questions that say, provide the exact value, you're explicitly told not to approximate by rounding into decimal places. So for rounding, we look at the value of the digit to the right of the specified digit, and then of course if it's between 5 and 9, we round up. If it's between 0 or 4, we leave the digit unchanged, or in other words, we round down. So I'm going to do one question, one example. On the right-hand side, it says round 34,867 to the nearest thousand. Of course, that's quite a mouthful, so instead let's round it off to what we might be more familiar with. 34,867, the thousandth thousandth, there we go, position would be of course the 4, so I'm looking at the digit after that, the 5, 5 of course means round up as per my notes, so therefore I would write 35,000, that is round to the nearest thousand. Any questions? Jeez. Great. Ah, uh, scientific notation, this is where I think we would struggle more with, because it's a lot less applicable in our everyday life. Have you ever put something in the calculator, most likely when it's incorrect, and ended up with an answer that looks like this? 8e to the uh, negative 15. Have you guys seen that before in your calculator? Yeah. yeah? Uh, the e stands for times 10. And then the number after the e is what's to the power of. So if you've got 8e negative 15 in your calculator, I'm, I'm assuming you've done something wrong, if, unless it's for this exercise, uh, but it means that we have 8 times 10 to the power of negative 15, which is an extraordinarily small number. So uh, let's focus on the small number on the right hand side over here. So small numbers, of course, we have to the power, as I mentioned, of a negative number. The more negative the power of times 10 is, the more decimal places we're forced to move. So for example, 0, 0.0000 blah blah blah, whatever we have. On the other end, if it's to the power of a very positive number, it's extremely large. So for example, 2.49 times 10 to the power of 11, as you can see, has 11 zeros. Any questions? Okay. Uh, let's try our best to convert between scientific notation and our decimal place values. So over here, write the following numbers in scientific notation. We have 7,800,000. So of course, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and figure out how many decimal places there are. Okay. So in this case, I'm saying that I want, let's say I want 7.8. Because 7.8 seems like the nicest number to have. 7.8 times blah, 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 blah. So in order to get 7.8, I have to move the decimal place, because where's the decimal place right now, as this whole number? In the very back, thank you very much. The very back, so in order to move the decimal place from here, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I've moved it 6 times. So my answer is 7.8 times 10 to the power of 6. Which you might see in your calculator, 7.8 E6. Of course, the other way around. I want to get it to so the decimal places after the first digit, so I have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, in order to get it 5. So I would write 5, and just so that the assessor is super, uh, sorry, I'm super clear to the assessor, there we go, that I know where the decimal place is, I'm going to write 5.0 times 10 to the power of 
times 10 to the power of, and I said 7, didn't I? So I'm going to write 7. What's wrong with this? Negative. Thank you very much. It's a negative because, of course, it's an extremely small value. If we just wrote it to the power of uh, 10, sorry, times 10 to the power of 7, it'd be an extremely large value. Going backwards, so, as soon as this loads, if we are writing the following scientific notations as basic numerals, it means that we're trying to get those zeros back. 10 to the power of 7 means it's an extremely large value. So I'm going to write 3, 5, 7, 6, knowing full well that the decimal place is between the 3 and the 5. I'm going to move it 7 times. If I'm getting to a larger number, it means I have to move the decimal place to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. What do I fill in those empty gaps with? Zero, Zero is too easy. So my answer ends up being 3, 5, 7, 6, and then 4 zeros. Let's do the next one. 7.9 times 10 power negative 5. It can get a little bit more tricky because we're working with extremely small numbers this time. And I know it's small because of the negative power. So again, I'm going to write 7.9 here. But this time, I'm going to go to the left because the number is extremely small. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Of course, filling in those gaps with zeros. And don't forget, even though the decimal is there, we have to write the zero on the left-hand side of the decimal as well. So our final answer would be 0 0.4 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 9. Any questions? Okay. That's scientific notation, which we would use, as the name suggests, for extremely small, extremely large values that we use scientific uh, values for. So, for example, the distance between the Earth and Mercury, or, for example, the size of an atom. It doesn't make sense if someone says, what is the size of an atom? And you say, 0 0.0000000000, you get the point, right? So we use scientific notation to make that clear and accessible to the people that don't explicitly understand those values. For significant figures, it is kind of similar to rounding decimals, with the only difference being that we're not, we're not focusing on the decimals, but rather on the number of important digits. And I'm going to specify important digits, because not all digits are important. And we can determine whether a digit is important by whether if we remove that digit, it changes our answer. So, all non-zero digits are significant. So any number that's not zero is important. All zeros between significant digits are also significant. And what I mean by that is that if a zero is in between two important numbers, it is also therefore considered important by proximity. That's a life lesson for some of you, maybe. After a decimal point, all zeros to the right of a non-zero digits are significant. We'll go through examples, and uh, it'll make more sense when we go through those examples. We have to round 93.738095 to two significant figures. From left to right, what are the most important numbers? From left to right. Nine and the three. Thank you. The nine and the three. Every other number after that is not that they're not important, but they're less important than the nine and the three. If I was to remove, for example, the first seven after the decimal place right here, would that have as much of an impact as if I removed the nine? Of course not. If I remove the nine, it goes from 93 to nine. Sorry, to three, sorry. So the two significant digits are the nine and the three, and therefore my answer would be nine, three. However, of course, same as our rounding digits, we're rounding up. So that becomes 94. Again, what does this symbol mean? Thank you very much, I appreciate that. It means approximately. To one significant figure, this one confuses quite a number of people. If we're round to one significant figure, the most important digit, of course, is the 9. And therefore, I'm looking after that. So I'm going to write 9. Am I rounding up or down because of the 3? Sorry? Down. down. Thank you very much. Now, I've got one significant figure. I've written 9. Is that approximately our original number? No, what do I have to add? Zero. 
90. That's one significant figure. If I just wrote 9, it's a completely different value, of course. All right. Last one, I believe. Round 0 0.006473, 5 to 4 significant figures. Of course, this is where we're trying to determine what the most important values are. So, 0, is that important? Okay, I like that. Is this zero important? If I remove that zero after decimal place, will that change our value? Yes. Great, it is important. If I go back, if I remove the zero before the decimal place, would our number really make sense? Does it technically make sense to say 0, 0.00 something? Technically, we need the zero, don't we? So that's significant as well. Is the third zero, the second one after the decimal place, is that important? Is the sixth important? Great. So our four significant digits are 0, 0, 0, 6. So I'm going to write 0, 0.006. Are we running up or down? What's wrong with what I've done? What's wrong with what I've done? I've identified the values somewhat incorrectly. So if I go back to this, what are the most important numbers, right? So zeros are important, of course, but if they're the right of non-zero digits, they're significant. Even though we can still, we technically should write the zeros, of course, but in order for them to be considered significant figures, they must be on the right-hand side of non-zero digits. So, our significant figures are actually these ones here. So, I still write the 0.00s, because if I don't write them, the whole value changes, doesn't it? But then I write 6, 4, 7, and running up because of the 5, 4. So we must identify not just what numbers would change our answer, but what our specific significant figures are. Would you guys like one more example of that one? Yeah. Let's do three. Uh, let's do one significant figure, and sometimes you see it as one s dot f for significant figure. The zeros are important. Of course, I need to include them. However, what is the first non-zero digit from the left to the right? Six, that is my significant figure. And therefore, 0, 0.00, and we round down because of the four, six. Okay, so identify your significant figures. And they must be, as I, as I mentioned in the third dot point, after decimal points, all zeros to the right of non-zero non digits are significant. Any questions? Yep, so we ran it down, so instead of running 6-4, we wrote just 6. Yep. Great.